Madam Chair, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, today I will brief you in my capacity as a member of the former Commission of Inquiry. Wait, wasn't the Commission of Inquiry buried six feet under? Why is the special rapporteur trying to bring it back from the dead? We wish to remind this important gathering that the Commission of Inquiry does not exist. Its mandate was terminated at the 31st session of the Human Rights Council last July in Geneva. The Council had co considered its report, took note of it, and decided to reject its key recommendations, which included astonishingly sending yet another African country, Eritrea, to the International Criminal Court. Indeed, the key recommendations of the corrupt Commission of Inquiry was rejected. It had presented no evidence whatsoever for its wild unsubstantiated accusations. Many people, including distinguished lawyers and experts, pointed out the fact that the Commission of Inquiry on Eritrea lacked independence, impartiality, objectivity, transparency, and integrity. The Commission of Inquiry's mandate was finished slash terminated more than three months ago, so it shouldn't have been brought up here. There was a lot of controversy as to why this unprecedented scenario was allowed to occur. You know the controversy of in what capacity I'm speaking today. I have been introduced yesterday by the chair of the uh, third committee when I gave my, um, my uh, well, during the interactive dialogue as a member of the former uh, Commission of Inquiry on Eritrea. That's the point. The Commission of Inquiry's mandate was over, terminated, it shouldn't have been raised here. But then again, as we have seen over the years, when it comes to Eritrea, there's a different set of rules and corrupt procedures. The aim of allowing the special rapporteur to talk about the dead Commission of Inquiry is a desperate attempt of trying to persuade those present in the meeting in agreeing to what she says by the manipulation of their emotions with unfounded, unsubstantiated, horrifying statements like this. The Commission also documented various acts of sexual and gender-based violence. In military training camps and in, our, in the army, some young women are also used as slaves to perform domestic duties and are also raped. Rape is also committed in detention facilities by officials and guards, not only against a significant number of women, but also against men. While some forms of torture are used against both men and women, other forms are gender specific, such as the beating of pregnant women in military training camps or in the army to induce abortion. Instances of sexual violence against men were also documented by the Commission, including sexual torture done intentionally to ensure that me these men are no longer able to reproduce. Rape, bad. Torture, bad. Pregnant women being beaten, bad. Men being sexually tortured, bad. All these things are bad, so now, agree and believe. Everything I'm saying, what I'm saying is the truth is the message that she is trying to sell here. What the special rapporteur fails to realize is that no amount of sensationalized, fictitious propaganda can be substituted as evidence. The fact of the matter is, the Commission of Inquiry had failed to bring forth any evidence for its wild accusations against the state of Eritrea. This was not an attack on the Eritrean government. This was a vicious and vile attack on the culture and norms of the Eritrean people. One, can safely say, that rape against women in Eritrea, is extremely rare, it's something that is frowned upon, and has serious consequences, if such crime is committed, and is dealt with accordingly, to the law. But then, to also go on, and say men are also raped in Eritrea, is just beyond disbelief. Homosexuality, in itself, has always been something alien, to the Eritrean population, so to suggest that men, would be raped in such a society, and that it's widespread, is just shocking. It's precisely these type of lies, that has angered, tens of thousands of Eritreans in the diaspora, worldwide.
Unfortunately for the special rapporteur, and her sponsors, people and nations weren't buying her, sensationalized, baseless, propaganda statements. In reverse, the overwhelming majority that spoke, gave the special rapporteur, an earful, of what they thought about her disgraceful, widely discredited reports. And that they rejected the country-specific mandate, and its politically motivated nature. Madam Chair, China takes note of the presentation by Mrs. Keita Ruth. China's position on country-specific mandates is crystal clear. We oppose forcing through the establishment of a country-specific mandate without the consent of the country concerned. And we believe imposing an inquiry mechanism from outside is neither conducive to dialogue aimed at uh, solving problems, nor to the promotion and protection of human rights. Eritrea made steady progress in human rights in recent years, with particularly remarkable results in economic, social, and cultural rights, as it's one of eight African countries to have achieved the MDGs. Eritrea actively cooperated with UN human rights bodies, participated in two cycles of UPR, and accepted 92 recommendations in the UPR reports. It signed an agreement with the United Nations on the implementation of these recommendations and accelerated its implementation efforts. We call upon the international community to be objective when looking at the difficulties and challenges facing Eritrea as a developing country in its efforts to promote and protect the human rights of the citizens. We call upon the international community to make a fair assessment of the progress made by Eritrea in this regard and abandon the practices of exerting pressure and naming and shaming. The international community should engage in constructive dialogue and provide Eritrea with more technical assistance and capacity building support. Thank you, Madam Chair. Regarding the report on the human rights situation in Eritrea, Venezuela says once again that it is not in favor of special procedures which have not been coordinated with the country involved. And we therefore once again reject a selectivity in the treatment of human rights issues with political purposes and the creation of any instrument to report or resolution uh, which is country specific um, based on politically motivated decisions. Uh, the use of uh, human rights for political ends is a violation of the principles and purposes of the UN Charter. The practice of reports and uh, uh, committees of inquiry which are politically twisted for the specific country purposes uh, violates the principles of objectivity, impartiality, uh, etc., uh, which should be used in addressing human rights uh, themes. We welcome the uh, positive steps regarding the Human Rights Council. Uh, their uh, credibility is undermined by this sort of approach. Um, human rights should be looked at in the framework of the Universal Periodic Review. This is the uh, ex per excellence instrument uh, on the basis, again, of dialogue and agreement with countries. Thank you very much. The delegations of uh, Nicaragua and Bolivia are concerned that once again this UN body is lending itself uh, to follow the intention of certain member states uh, to carry out reports on developing countries uh, with uh, the purposes of political pressure being exerted and running counter to principles of universality and objectivity. Our delegations wish to reiterate their position on these reports and resolutions on the situation of human rights. Uh, which are country specific, which uh, come every year to the third committee. And we wish once again to reject uh, this uh, policy leading to selectivity and politicization of human rights. For us, dialogue and cooperation inter parties is the way of improving any situation without uh, resorting to foreign uh, action or external pressure, and even less uh, to conditioning or politicizing the human rights situation. We believe that the uh, body mm, dealing for human rights uh, in all uh, countries must be the Human Rights Council. And therefore, it, there is the Universal Periodic Review. This is the uh, instrument uh, that is suitable for this based on objectivity, impartiality, objectivity, impartiality. Uh, it's fostering and rendering more sound human rights by means of a constructive dialogue that uh, can involve all countries on an equal footing. Thank you. Cuba favors uh, a spirit of cooperation and dialogue in promoting all human rights in all countries throughout the world. Well, therefore, we believe that it is the Universal Periodic Review carried out by the Human Rights Council which uh, can ensure this. And taking into account uh, this, uh, Cuba uh, does not uh, foster procedures, uh, country-specific procedures. 
which uh, are all aimed at countries in the South. We urge uh, the creation of a new opportunity for cooperation that can foster the direct involvement of regional and sub-regional organizations, uh, African ones, in questions which are uh, of concern and uh, in seeking uh, effective solutions, including the Eritrean authorities, uh, dealing with their concerns and helping the Eritrean people as a purpose. Thank you. In line with the NAM principal position, we do not support country-specific resolutions, as these resolutions, we believe, do not contribute to the improvement of the overall human rights situation of those countries and do not take into account the different levels of their development, national situation, religious background, culture, and challenges. Madam Chair, we took note of the various measures taken by the Eritrea government to protect and promote human rights in Eritrea. We commend the engagement of the government of Eritrea with various, uh, with various uh, uh, countries and organizations, including United Nations, African Union, and European Union. We have noted with appreciation the commitment of Eritrea to cooperate with uh, Human Rights Council and the Office of the Human Rights uh, uh, Office of the Commission of Human Rights with a view to consolidating the human rights of its citizens. I thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, my delegation would like to endorse the statement which was made by Venezuela on behalf of the non-aligned movement. The Burundi delegation has taken due note of the report submitted by the Special Rapporteur on Human Rights in Eritrea and would like now to reiterate its position in principle to oppose the mandate of the Commission of Inquiry which deals specifically with a given country as being counterproductive. Burundi is also concerned about the tend towards using human rights for political purposes, something which harms the cooperation as a principle, an essential one to promote and protect effectively human rights, universally recognized ones in accordance with the United Nations Charter. My delegation believes that the United Nations has sufficient machinery to look at the situation regarding human rights everywhere. And we are referring here to the periodic review, the universal periodic review, which is much more constructive and much more likely to achieve tangible results in Eritrea and elsewhere. The Human Rights Council should refrain from any politicization and try to be objective and to avoid thereby any situation of confrontation which does not help any country to develop. Thank you. We take this opportunity to reaffirm our position that the best approach to address human rights concerns is through constructive engagement based on the principles of impartiality, transparency, objectivity, and non-selectivity. Pakistan strongly believes that states have the primary responsibility for the promotion and protection of the human rights of their citizens in accordance with their international obligations. Any external interference through country-specific mandates is counterproductive. Madam Chair, we welcome Eritrea's commitment to fulfill its international obligations as reflected through its participation in the UPR process and hope that the government of Eritrea will continue on this constructive path. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Egypt aligns itself with the statement made by the non-aligned movement delivered by the delegation of Venezuela. At their summit in Sharm el-Sheikh, the heads of state and government of NAM emphasized the role of the Human Rights Council as the United Nations body responsible for considering human rights situations in all countries. They also expressed deep concern over the continued practice of selective adoption of country-specific resolutions in the Third Committee. That position was reiterated once again during the last NAM summit held in Margarita, Venezuela in September of last year, this year during which the heads of state and government of NAM reaffirmed their deep concern over the continued continuation of the proliferation of the practice of selective adoption of country-specific resolutions in the Third Committee, as well as the Human Rights Council. In this regard, they noted that such resolutions are a tool that exploit human rights for political purposes and breach the principles of universality, impartiality, objectivity, and non-selectivity in addressing human rights issues. 
They also noted that such practices undermine cooperation as the essential principle to effectively promote and protect all universally recognized human rights for all, in accordance with the United Nations Charter and international law provisions. In this regard, the movement stressed that the Universal Periodic Review of the Human Rights Council was the main intergovernmental cooperative mechanism to review human rights issues at the national level in all countries without distinction and had been established to eliminate selectivity, politicization, and double standards. Egypt animately believes that the human rights and fundamental freedoms should be addressed through a cooperative and non-confrontational approach based on enhancing national capacities of states to implement their international obligations nationally and without interference. It is against this backdrop that Egypt rejects all country-specific mandates in, as a general principle. And thank you. Madam Chairperson, we have studied the statement made by the Special Rapporteur on Human Rights in Eritrea. Our delegation would like to express, sorry, says the speaker, welcome the positive cooperation between the UN and Eritrea to promote human rights therein. We should take into consideration the positive steps taken by Eritrea including its acceptance of 92 recommendations during the UPR of Human Rights Council and establishing a machinery to implement these recommendations and achieve an agreement with the UN to expedite the implementation of the UPR recommendations and other human rights obligations. We also welcome Eritrea's cooperation with the Human Rights Commissioner as well as its active cooperation with the UNODC. These achievements represent progress that make the obligation of Eritrea firm in promotion of human rights. We are confident that it will continue its positive cooperation with the UN on this field. in this field. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. My delegation joins with a statement made by Venezuela on behalf of the Non-Aligned Movement. We wish to state once again our position of full support for the work and institutional nature of the Human Rights Council, the body which has a remit to scrutinize the human rights situation. And we regret the fact that there is still a proliferation of practices which are created with political ends and obeying double standards. Uh, violating the principles of universality, impartiality, objectivity, and non-selectivity. We believe that um, these are of a political nature and don't promote or protect human rights. Quite the opposite. They undermine interstate relationships, the constructive dialogue, international cooperation, and uh, those carefully crafted mechanisms such as the Universal Periodic Review, which Ecuador fully supports, and which we shall continue to defend are the two instruments. Thank you. Well, I think Belarus would like to join with the statement made already and once again state that the country, the country related mandates should not be artificial barriers to a positive dialogue among states. We are convinced that the country subjects and discussions in the UN should not strengthen confrontation. And we appreciate the activities of the Eritrea and the special procedures involved and the visit of the mission to Eritrea. We also welcome the efforts of Eritrea on the recommendations of the Universal Declaration and the United Nations bodies in their carrying out of their mandates. And we feel that this is one of the basic instruments which enables us to consider the situation with regard to human rights without any prejudicial attitudes. And we feel that a dialogue with Eritrea should be based without any pressure on the part of the country mandate. Thank you. We align ourselves with the statements delivered by the delegation of Venezuela on behalf of the non-aligned movement. The pursuit of human rights is an ideal that is shared by all. In addressing issues of the promotion and protection of human rights, we must always be cognizant of the fact that no country has achieved the status of the perfect realization of human rights for its people. Consequently, none has the moral authority to condemn the human rights challenges faced by another or belittle a country's efforts at promoting the human rights of its citizens. When one country or a group of countries takes on the mantle of human rights prefects, this achieves nothing more than the polarization of the debate and reduces the consideration of this important issue to mere political. 
As such, Zimbabwe once again restates its position against country mandates as they promote double standards and seek to institutionalize the selective treatment of countries. Any consideration of human rights must be done in a manner that is even-handed, impartial, and that accords each state the primal role in the promotion and protection of the rights of its citizens. We would like to recall that when we established the Human Rights Council through Resolution 60-251, we agreed that it would be guided by the principles of universality, impartiality, objectivity, non-selectivity, constructive dialogue, and cooperation. The creation of a country mandate without the concurrence of the affected country runs counter to the creation of an environment that allows for constructive dialogue and cooperation. Furthermore, it complicates the work of the mandate holders and undermines the balance of their reports. We therefore re re reiterate our conviction that the universe, Universal Periodic Review remains the best forum for all states to have their efforts towards the promotion and protection of human rights reviewed impartially and on an equal footing. I the delegation of Myanmar has carefully followed the oral updates of the Special Rapporteur on Eritrea and would like to make the following remarks. One. The efforts in promotion and protection of human rights should be based on cooperation and genuine dialogue. Two, my delegation believes that political and social stability is a key for overall development of a country. Three, we remain confident that the UPI mechanism provides the most appropriate framework to enhance the international cooperation in the field of human rights where all states are treated on an equal footing. Four, and finally, Madam Chair, along these lines, we encourage the concerned country to continue its engagement with the international community in implementing accepted UPR recommendations. I thank you, Madam Chair. My delegation aligns itself with the statement made by Venezuela on behalf of non ally movement. The Islamic Republic of Iran once again underlines its principal position concerning the reports presented by the Special Rapporteur on the Human Rights Situation in Eritrea, that the duplicative practice of considering country-specific situation in the Third Committee and exploitation of this platform for political ends is in breach of the principles of universality, non-selectivity, objectivity, and non-interference in, in addressing human rights issues and undermines cooperation and dialogue among states as the essential requirements for promotion and protection of all universally recognized human rights. We reiterate our conviction that the UPR mechanism is the right venue for reviewing the human rights situation in all member states on an equal basis with full participation of the concerned governments. I thank you very much. We would like once again to reassert the principle of position of the Russian Federation on the lack of productivity of activities on hand, human rights bodies and making such uh, studies. This is not in keeping with objectivity and lack of prejudice, and which are inherent in the work of United Nations human rights bodies. And in the, there is no justification in the human rights sphere, and there is no... My delegation would like to appreciate the Special Rapporteur for her oral update in her capacity as a member of the former Inquiry Commission on Eritrea, as well as in her capacity as a Special Rapporteur. We appreciate her courageous commitment and decisiveness in accounting those crimes committed against humanity in Eritrea. We wish her further success in discharging her responsibility to follow up the implementation of the recommendations of the Inquiry Commission. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. I'll give the floor to the distinguished delegation of Eritrea. Thank you, Madam Chair. I wish, on behalf of Eritrea, to thank the Non-Aligned Movement, its chair, Venezuela, and all those countries that spoke on the basis of principle. Eritrea appreciates your solidarity and support. To those who made unsubstantiated allegations and unfair accusations against Eritrea, I would like to say please review your views 
adjust your views and engage in Eritrea in positive and constructive cooperation. And please stop double standards in dealing with the issues of human rights. I have a, a simple comment for Ethiopia, which should be the last country to speak about human rights. Ethiopia should be hiding its head here, not speaking about human rights violations in Eritrea. This is a country that is committing gross violations of human, human rights, committing crimes against humanity, has massacred thousands of people, has, has imprisoned tens of thousands. This is a country where making a simple sign of protest like this X is considered a crime. We're watching independent media stations and accessing Facebook is punishable by five years imprisonment. This is a country that has declared martial law that is being ruled by a command post. And uh, it is sad that this forum is discussing Eritrea and not Ethiopia. I uh, feel uh, sad to make these comments, but I feel obliged to make them just to expose the double standards that this forum is dealing with. But more importantly, I would like to reaffirm and uphold the position of NAM. Thank you. Agradezco la delegación I should like to thank the delegation of Eritrea uh, for that statement. As the Eritrean delegation has pointed out, it is sad that Eritrea is being discussed in such forum, when there are countries like TPLF ruled Ethiopia, where real crimes against humanity has and are still being committed, and with the evidence to back it up. But here we have Eritrea being accused of crimes against humanity by a dead commission of inquiry and a special rapporteur who has not provided a single evidence for their extraordinary claims, and who has also been collaborating with the regime in Ethiopia, who is responsible for real crimes against humanity. I would like to thank the governments of Djibouti and Ethiopia for their invitation and cooperation and flexibility during my visit. If you're looking for the truth, subscribe and stay tuned for more. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,